Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today this video is about Microsoft Windows 11, KB5027303, OS build 2261.1928. Starting with this build, and talking about the new things introduced to this build, this update expands the rollout of notification badging for Microsoft accounts on the start menu. A Microsoft account is what connects Windows to your Microsoft apps. The account backs up all your data and helps you to manage your subscriptions. You can also add extra security steps to keep you from being locked out of your account. This feature gives you quick access to important account-related notifications. This update improves the sharing of a local file in File Explorer with Microsoft Outlook contacts. You now have the option to quickly email the file to yourself. In addition, loading your contacts from Outlook is better. This feature is not available for files stored in Microsoft OneDrive folders. OneDrive has its own sharing functionality. This update adds live captions for the following languages. This update redesigns the in-app voice access command help page. Every command now has a description and examples of its variations. The search bar allows you to quickly find commands. The new categories provide further guidance. This update adds voice access command support for the following English dialects. This update adds a VPN status icon, a small shield, to the system tray. It displays when you are connected to a recognized VPN profile. The VPN icon will be overlaid in your system's accent color over the active network connection. You can now choose to display seconds in the clock on the system tray. To turn this on, go to the Taskbar Behaviors section in Settings, Personalization, Taskbar. You can also right-click the Taskbar to quickly get to Taskbar Settings. This update provides a copy button for you to quickly copy two-factor authentication two FA, codes. These are in notification toasts you get from apps installed on your PC or from phones linked to your PC. Note that this feature only works for English. This update adds access key shortcuts to File Explorer's context menu. An access key is a one keystroke shortcut. You can use it to quickly run a command in a context menu using your keyboard. Each access key corresponds to a letter in the display name of the menu item. To try this out, you can click on a file in File Explorer and press the menu key on your keyboard. This update adds multi-app kiosk mode, which is a lockdown feature. If you are an administrator, you can specify the apps that can run on a device. Other apps will not run. You can also block certain functionalities. You can configure distinct types of access and apps to run for different users on one device. Multi-app kiosk mode is ideal for scenarios in which multiple people use the same device. Some examples are frontline workers, retail, education, and test taking. Some lockdown customizations include Limit access to settings, except certain pages, such as Wi-Fi and screen brightness. Show only the apps that are allowed on the start menu. Block certain toasts and pop-up windows. This update introduces Live Kernel Memory Dump (LKD) collection from Task Manager. Using LKD, you can gather data to troubleshoot an issue while the OS continues to work. This reduces downtime when you must investigate an unresponsive program or high-impact failures. To capture an LKD, go to Task Manager, Details. Right-click the system process. Select Create Live Kernel Memory Dump File. This captures a full Live Kernel or Kernel Stack Memory Dump. This update replaces the settings for Show the Touch Keyboard when there's no keyboard attached. These are located at Settings, Time and Language, Typing, Touch Keyboard. A new drop-down menu gives you three options to control whether tapping an edit control should open the touch keyboard. The options are Never. This suppresses the touch keyboard even when no hardware keyboard is attached. When no keyboard attached. This shows the touch keyboard only when you use the device as a tablet without the hardware keyboard. Always. This shows the touch keyboard even when the hardware keyboard is attached. This update enables Content Adaptive Brightness Control CABC to run on laptops and two-in-one devices. This feature dims or brightens areas of a display based on the content. It tries to strike a balance between saving battery life and providing a good visual experience. You can adjust the feature setting from Settings, System, Display, Brightness and Color. The drop-down menu gives you three options, Off, Always, and On Battery Only. For battery-powered devices, the default is On Battery Only. Because the device manufacturer must enable CABC, the feature might not be on all laptops or two-in-one devices. This update adds a USB for hubs and devices settings page. You can find it at Settings, Bluetooth and Devices, USB, USB for hubs and devices. This new page provides information about the system's USB 4 capabilities and the attached peripherals on a system that supports USB 4. 
This information helps with troubleshooting when you need manufacturer or system administrator support. This update adds a presence sensor privacy setting in settings, privacy and security, presence sensing. If you have a device that has compatible presence sensors, you can now choose the apps that can access those sensors. You can also choose the apps that do not have access. Microsoft does not collect images or metadata. The device hardware processes your information locally to maximize privacy. This update improves the performance of search within settings. This update changes the default print screen PRTSCR, key behavior. Pressing the print screen key opens the snipping tool by default. You can turn off this setting from settings. Accessibility, keyboard. If you have previously changed this setting, Windows will preserve your preference. This update introduces a limit of 20 most recent tabs in settings, multitasking. This affects the number of tabs that appear when you use Alt plus Tab and Snap Assist. This update improves the cloud suggestion and the integrated search suggestion. This helps you to easily type popular words in simplified Chinese using the input method editor, IME. The cloud suggestion adds the most relevant word from Microsoft Bing to the EMA candidate window. The integrated search suggestion gives you additional suggestions that are like what you see on a Bing search page. You can insert a suggestion as text or search for it directly in Bing. To turn on these features, select a chevron button in the upper right of the EMA candidate window. Then select the turn on button. This update improves your computer's performance when you use a mouse that has a high report rate for gaming. This update addresses an issue that affects the on-screen keyboard. The issue stops it from opening after you lock the machine. This update addresses an issue that might affect your computer when you are playing a game. Timeout detection and recovery (TDR) errors might occur. This update addresses an issue that affects certain apps. In some instances, video flickering occurs. This update addresses an issue that affects File Explorer (Explorer.exe). It stops working. This update addresses an issue that affects some earbuds. They stop streaming music. This update addresses an issue that affects the recommended section of the start menu. When you right-click a local file, it does not behave as expected. This update adds many new features and improvements to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. With this update, you can now authenticate across Microsoft Clouds. This feature also satisfies conditional access checks if they are needed. His update affects virtual memory ranges. They are now added to kernel-generated mini-dumps after a stop error. This update improves several simplified Chinese fonts and the Microsoft Pinion Input Method Editor IME, to support GB18030-2022. You can enter and display characters from Conformance Level 1 or 2 using the additions to Microsoft Yahe, Simpson, and Dengxian. This update now supports Unicode extensions E and F in the Simpson XB font. This meets the requirements for Level 3. This update affects the reliability of Windows. It improves after you update the OS. This update addresses an issue that affects Microsoft Intune push notifications. The issue stops devices that have less than 3.5 GB of RAM from getting them. This update addresses an issue that affects certain apps. It stops working when it tries to scan a barcode. This update addresses an issue that affects Narrator. The issue stops Narrator from retaining your scan mode when you switch between browsers. This update addresses an issue that affects Narrator. It reads the wrong state when you cancel the selection of an option button you have selected. This update addresses an issue that affects Teams. The issue stops Teams from alerting you about missed calls or messages. This update addresses an issue that affects a scheduled monthly task. It might not run on time if the next occurrence happens when daylight savings time occurs. This update addresses an issue that affects certain applications that use IDB Object Store. They do not work in Microsoft Edge and Emote. This update addresses an issue that affects all the registry settings under the policies paths. They might be deleted. This occurs when you do not rename the local temporary user policy file during group policy processing. This update gives user accounts the ability to open an elevated Windows terminal. This only works if they use an admin account that is not signed in before. This update affects the desktop window manager DWM. It improves its reliability. This update addresses an issue that affects .msi files. A minor update is not installed. This occurs when you use the Enterprise Desktop App Management Configuration Service Provider CSP, to distribute the .msi file. This update addresses an issue that affects msfdconnecttext.net. It gets excessive HTTP traffic. This update addresses an issue that affects the Spooler service. It stops working. This issue occurs when you print using a certain workspace. This update addresses an issue that affects devices that use the network protector for BitLocker. The device will not resume after it has been suspended. This update addresses an issue that affects a tib.sys driver. It does not load. 
This occurs when Hypervisor Protected Code Integrity HVCI, is enabled. This update addresses an issue that affects text input host.exe. It stops working. This update addresses an issue that affects Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365 users. You might not see the right location for a remote desktop session in your virtual machine or cloud PC. You can now set and maintain the correct default permissions for this directory path. When the permissions are wrong, start menu, search, and Azure Active Directory, Azure AD, authentication fails. This update affects Active Directory Event ID 1644 processing. It now accepts events of greater than 64 kilobytes in length. This change truncates lightweight directory access protocol, LDAP, queries contained within event 1644 to 20,000 characters by default. This update addresses an issue that affects those who enable the smart card is required for interactive logon account option. When RC4 is disabled, you cannot authenticate to remote desktop services farms. The error message is, an authentication error has occurred. The requested encryption type is not supported by the KDC. This update addresses an issue that affects File Explorer. It might stop responding indefinitely. This occurs after you try to view the effective access permissions for files in File Explorer. So that was all from Microsoft for this build. If you want to know more, follow the link to the official Microsoft blog from the description. Hope it was useful consider like for the video, subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions, just comment down below. Thanks for watching and have a great day ahead.